Hey everyone, so someone asked me if I could make a video on what we went through today. Um, so I figured I would do that. It might be useful for some of you and might not be as useful for others, but uh, it's, it's up in case you need it. So we talked about the reciprocal trig ratios today. Uh, so let's get into it. First thing is you guys probably remember the primary ratios from last year. So we have sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. Uh, you also learned last year that the sine of theta can be expressed as the opposite divided by the hypotenuse on a right triangle. And we learned this year how to write angles on a Cartesian plane if we want to go up to 360 degrees or pot potentially beyond. So we also learned that we could express this as y over r. For cosine of theta, we can express this as adjacent over hypotenuse or x over r. For tangent of theta, we learned that we could express it as uh, opposite over adjacent or y over x. Okay, so these are the three primary trigonometric ratios. Let's take a look at the reciprocal ratios. So, the first reciprocal ratio is called cosecant. So I'm just writing it down so you can have an idea of how it's spelled and how it's pronounced. It's typically written as CSC of theta, cosecant of theta, and it is the reciprocal of the sine function, which means it is equal to 1 over sine of theta. So cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. And since it's the reciprocal of the sine function, we can write it as the hypotenuse divided by the opposite, or r over y. Okay, so that's the first reciprocal ratio. The second reciprocal ratio is called secant. It's written as sec of theta. And it is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So it's equal to 1 over cosine of theta. So secant of theta is equal to 1 over cos theta. And it could also be written as hypotenuse over adjacent or r over x. Okay, and the last trig ratio, or sorry, the last reciprocal ratio, that is, is cotangent. And it is written as cot of theta. So cotangent of theta is equal to... Well, it's the reciprocal of 1 over, uh, sorry, it's the reciprocal of tangent, so we get 1 over tangent of theta. Uh, we can also write it as adjacent over opposite, or as x over y. Okay, so let's take a look at an example kind of question involving one of these. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the secant of 70 degrees. So again, you don't have a secant button on your calculator, so you can't just go to your calculator and press, uh, you know, find the secant of 70 degrees that way. So we're going to have to take secant of 70 degrees, and we're going to have to express it using one of our primary ratios, okay? So the secant of 70 degrees... Right? Well, we know that secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function. Right? So specifically, that secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. So the secant of 70 degrees is going to be 1 over the cosine of 70 degrees. And cosine of 70 degrees is something you can actually do in your calculator. Right? If you press cosine of 70, that will give you a value. So we want to do 1 divided by the cosine of 70 degrees. And we get approximately 2.9. Okay? So that's how you evaluate a, a reciprocal ratio if you have the angle. Okay? So let's do another example. What we're going to do is we're going to find all possible values of theta between 0 degrees and 360 degrees if we know that the cosecant of theta is 3.86. Okay, so again, we don't have a, a cosecant button on our calculator or a cotangent or a secant button. So we don't have a cosecant inverse or a cotangent inverse or a secant inverse either. Uh, so we're going to have to use our primary trig ratios to help us here. So we know that the cosecant of theta is uh, 3.86, and we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine ratio. So what we're going to do is we're going to write, instead of cosecant of theta, we're going to write 1 over the sine of theta is equal to 3.86. Okay? So now we have this in terms of sine, but we want to make sure that we have sine isolated. Uh, what I can actually do in this case is uh, I can take the reciprocal of both sides of my equation here because I have a fraction is equal to another fraction. So if I take the reciprocal of both sides, I get sine of theta over 1 or just sine of theta is equal to 1 over 3.86. Okay? Uh, since I have sine of theta by itself, I can now use my sine inverse. So theta is equal to the sine inverse of three point, or sorry, 1 over 3.86. Now, I want you to remember that this theta right here is not really a value of theta. It's going to give us something which will have the same uh, re uh, related acute angle as the angles we're looking for, but it is not the uh, necessarily, anyways, the correct value for theta. So uh, the sine inverse of 1 over 3.86 is 15 degrees. So in this case, we get a value of 15 degrees. And that 15 degrees means that uh, we are going to have two angles 
right? Between, because we're talking about between zero and 360 degrees that have the same related acute angle as this 15 degree angle. Now, a 15 degree angle is its own related acute angle, right? 15 degree angle has a related acute angle of 15 degrees. So that's, that's actually going to be our related acute angle, right? And what we need to do now is we need to decide which quadrants we're going to be working in. All right, so let's break out our cast rule. So C-A-S-T, cast. Um, Okay, so we know that the sine of theta, right, what we have over here is 1 over 3.86. That's a positive value. So what we're doing is we're looking for possible quadrants where sine is positive. So sine is positive in quadrant 1 over here, and it's positive in quadrant 2 here. So we know we're going to be looking for an angle in quadrant 1 and an angle in quadrant 2. So let's deal quadrant 1 first. So in quadrant 1, right, um, we have a 15 degree related acute angle. Well, the good news is that in quadrant one, a related acute angle is its, is its own angle, so we have 15 degrees. So one value is 15 degrees for theta. Okay, let's talk quadrant two. So in quadrant two, uh, we're going to have a related acute angle of 15 degrees uh, in quadrant two as well. All right, and that means that we're 15 degrees less than a full, well, than a 180 degree turn. Okay, so this time our angle theta is going to be 180 degrees minus 15 degrees, which is 165 degrees. Okay, so therefore all the possible values of theta between 0 and 360 degrees, if cosecant of theta is 3.86, are going to be 15 degrees and 165 degrees. Okay, so this is just a couple things for the reciprocal ratios and how to use them in a couple questions. Hopefully it's useful to some of you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.